The Masonic in San Francisco. It's the Q. Covering Lenovo Tech World 2016. Brought to you by Lenovo. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and John Walls. And welcome back to the Masonic Auditorium here in San Francisco as the Lenovo Tech World continues. John Walls along with Stu Miniman here as we continue from the keynote stage where uh, they had a, uh, uh, just a passel of announcements uh, about two or three hours ago, consumer product side and of course on the infrastructure side, which is what we're going to talk about with our next guest. Stuart McRae, who is the Director of Product Planning, Storage, and Networking at Lenovo. And Stuart, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me, it's great to be here again. Nice, nice to have you here, we, we appreciate the, the time here. Um, you know, SDS, it's kind of the buzz right now, right? But why now? You know, what's happening that generates so much consumer interest and, and what's Lenovo's focus on yeah, that's, SDS? That's an excellent question, John. So, uh, as, we've, as data's really exploded over the past number of years, right? It's, uh, SDS is a solution that addresses that. So customers, when they think about their storage environments from a legacy model, they really don't scale to, to where they need to go for the, you know, we heard about the internet of things and all the data being generated from the phones and everything. A lot of that's businesses generating that data for them as well that, to do analytics on. A traditional storage legacy controller doesn't really scale to that scope. So customers and the industry is looking at a different approach, right? That's one thing that's driving it. I think the development model for storage is changing. Uh, you can innovate much faster in software, right? And so when you separate the hardware from the software, the software can innovate on its own pace and the hardware can innovate separately. It's a, it's a much different model from, a, from a, you know, a development piece where Lenovo, for example, we like it because we sell lots and lots of servers, right? One of the largest server manufacturers in the world. When we can move the storage to a server, it eliminates that entire development burden for the ISV, for the, and they can focus on what they do really well, whether it's scale up file or scale out file, object storage, providing innovation that customers are looking for when they're going from their like their small stores today to the petabytes they need to manage. So is that what Store Select's all about? New product that you've launched? It, it sounds like that's, this is how you're trying to address what's going on out there. Absolutely, Store Select's a really big part of it. So Store Select, when we look at the market for software-defined storage, like anything in storage, it's not necessarily simple, right? Um, and we view it from a continuum of, there's a do-it-yourself solution, maybe a more open stack solution, which is really important, and you can get things out of it. But a lot of customers want a complete finished, easy to implement solution. So that's what we looked at in the market. We, and Lenovo's done different things with ISVs to, 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 to kind of get our feet wet in that. Uh, and what we learned going through that was it didn't really meet what the storage administrator wanted, right? It was kind of what we call a meet in the channel. So we might take a best of breed software and our hardware, but when you put it together in the channel, you can only do such a good job, right? It's not integrated, it's not optimized. Who are you going to call for support, right? Because if your storage goes down, and the plan is it doesn't, but if, you know, occasionally it might, you want one phone number to call. So that's why we did Store Select. We, we picked uh, partners to go to market with who are really good at what they do. So really good at object storage, cloud in, really good at scale out file and block unified storage with Nextenta. Work with them to optimize integrate in our, in our labs and our factory, and then ship that with Lenovo service and support. Okay. Stuart, could you uh, kind of walk us through the storage portfolio? You got the Store Select, there's the Nutanix OEM, there, there's some other products, kind of, you know, what, what's Lenovo IP, what's uh, OEM technology, and, and what would the, the, the new stuff, is that an OEM, is that a partnership? Uh, can you clarify that? We're very much partner driven, yeah. right? Okay. So if you think about, you know, from a storage perspective, Lenovo is, is very new. Right, so we've got a huge legacy in servers, very well there for storage. You know, if you had talked to me 18 months ago, we had you know zero revenue, and, and, and most customers in the industry would say, "There's what is Lenovo storage?" So we're building that business. It's very much partner based. So we have a range of offerings. We have our traditional uh, block fiber channel storage, which is really, you know, still kind of the heart and soul of uh, small medium business as well as enterprises for their core applications. That we have a mix of S-Series organic. Uh, we also announced our V-Series products, which is a Lenovo branded 
uh, that we partner with IBM for their store-wise stack. Uh, and that's their first Lenovo branded mid-range, uh, traditional mid-range storage, which gets us into a new area, uh, very important for us. And then we also partner for areas that, um, you know, as any, many people in the industry do, partner for best of breed. Nutanix is uh, our solution for hyperconverge, uh, very complementary to what we do, and as you're combining, you know, the data that, that you store on traditional storage that needs to be near your compute, it's a great solution for that. Store Select and our appliances are really driven more for like a tier two, tier three uh, tier of the storage. Uh, and so we partner with them from a best of breed provider to say, hey, if you want scale out file, massive petabyte scale object storage, those are the things we're looking to address with that. So it's a, uh, it's a journey I think for most customers and for us as we build out that portfolio. So give us a review on the storage market. I mean, storage has always been a very fragmented uh, marketplace, uh, and until recently, I, I would have even called it very entrenched. So you've got, you know, no player ever owned more than usually a third of any, any part of the market, and, you know, there's so many sub-niches and, you know, uh, uh, solutions out there yet today. Things are changing so fast, new technologies are coming up, uh, market share even seems to be shifting rather rapidly, uh, so, you know, it's, Interesting and in I guess opportunistic time to build a new brand in the marketplace. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's uh, we're really excited about it. I mean, it's a you know it sounds cliche, but we really talk about it as being like a once in a lifetime opportunity in the storage market, and, and that's why we're investing so much from a Lenovo perspective. There's really a, a few things driving it. One is consolidation and just the traditional players are changing, right? And, and with the consolidation of major players that's going to force a lot of change with customers, right? No, no two companies get together and don't rationalize their portfolio. So as products go away, it's a new opportunity. Customers are going to move to something different. Um, they're going to move to either a different traditional storage, and, and obviously migration to storage is one of the hardest things customers have to do. So when, when your provider takes one thing away and you have to move to something else, it's time for those customers to look for new alternatives. Some of those will be traditional offerings, uh, some of those will be software defined. So that consolidation piece is a huge, huge driver. The second one is just flash. I mean, the flash, the, the ubiquity of flash that we will see over the next two or three years, I think will drive more changes in storage uh, than we've seen in a long time. Uh, and it's not just going to be at the high end, right? So AFA has a lot of the sizzle today. Uh, I predict if I come back in two years, we won't talk about AFA at all. We'll just talk about flash is the media that's in your storage. And it's going to change not only how storage is designed and delivered, but how customers use it. So I, I always like to use car analogies, right? Because that's something people can relate to. And, and what we talk about is the move from like traditional spinning media storage to flash would be like, if you move from a, a, like an internal combustion gasoline car with a manual transmission, you might be too young for that, but 30 or 40 <laughs> years ago, that's what everyone had. Yeah, I remember. Okay. Uh, I could drive sticks, so. Uh. <laughs> so if you move straight from that to an electric car, yeah. right? So the things about a, a gas engine that, you know, it's kind of ineffective, right? You have, so you have to add a transmission to it to get performance, low, medium, high. Just like we've done lots of stuff with spinning media and storage, because it, it's, a, it's a bottleneck, you have to tear it, you have to do lots of things to get around performance. When you move to electric car, guess what? There is no transmission, right? It's just fast. It's good if you're going slow, it's good if you're going fast. Flash media and storage will be pretty much the same way. And oh, by the way, as a storage provider, I don't have to worry about putting my transmission in. I don't have to worry about that complexity to do that. It'll also change the use model, right? So the use model, if you remember driving a stick, it wasn't intuitive, right? You had to learn it. You had to pay attention while you were driving, just like storage administrators today have to worry about tearing their storage, where's my hot data, where's my cold data. Flash storage, not just in the high end, but from entry to mid-range, will alleviate all of that. And enterprises will think about it differently, right? You know, years ago, if, if you like driving a stick drive and you came to San Francisco where we are, there would be no stick drives here. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that on the, on the bus on right, the way over here today. You know, <laughs> a guy from a small town in North Carolina cannot drive a stick drive in San Francisco, so. It, it just changes the way the use model and the way like enterprises think about deploying storage. That's why we think it's a really exciting. Um, and then the final one is scalability, right? 
Um, things like object storage we think will be transformative. Still relatively small today. We project it to grow pretty fast because it's the way for uh, customers at scale, and most customers will be at scale because they'll have, as, as they generate lots of data, they'll want to store it one way or another. You, know, you, you mentioned you're talking about customers or, uh, or you're talking about traditional storage versus SDS. Um, I mean, are, is it either or? Can, are they complementary in some respects or is there just a, it's got to be you know, one way or the other? How are your customers deploying that? It, is, it can be complementary, absolutely. Uh, and I think it will be a, a journey for many customers, right? So we're, we're a big believer in the Wikibon projection of traditional storage, giving way to software defined. We absolutely think that that's the model. It's what we debate constantly in our strategy is how fast that will happen. Um, storage, traditional storage as we know it, is, is not going to change overnight, right? I, storage is like a bad infection. It, once you get a storage, it never goes away, right? You just can't get rid of it. <laughs> so customers don't always like that. Um, but traditional storage is good for what people want it for, and that's why we're investing in our, in our new V-series line as well as our S-series to provide that, because fiber channel block storage for basic storage for my app, core applications, people know it, they love it, the network is so strong, it just works really well, and it keeps developing. But it's not good for petabytes, right? So if I'm a manufacturing or healthcare, where I'm just generating petabytes of storage all the time, you, you cannot manage it like that. And you can't manage it with a really traditional uh, scale-up storage controller. You, you got to scale out um, and throw, throw lots of, you can throw lots of x86 servers at it, and it, it scales very effectively and very cost effectively. All right, so uh, if you look at the Wikibon model, traditional is being uh, disrupted by two pieces. One, software-defined storage, and the other is the hyperscale in the public cloud. Right. Uh, is that the self-driving car in your car analogy, or uh, and, and how does Lenovo see, uh, you know, fit, fit into that part of the hyperscale and public cloud discussion? That's a good question. So we have a, we have a sister team that's focused on hyperscale, mm -hmm. uh, and Lenovo does very well in, in, in parts of the world in hyperscale. Very focused on that. As you know, it's a completely different model. Uh, we think, and it, it's, a, it's a direct model, custom kind of uh, delivery. The, from a, a large set of customers, not just consumer, will we'll move to the hyperscale because it's, it just makes sense for them. What we see for enterprises, it's interesting, but they typically want to move back. If they move there, they really want to move back to owning it themselves if they can. No customer wakes up and says, I want to go buy uh, public cloud today. They, they just don't think like that. Uh, they, they are interested in it. They would like their team to be able to build that internally. And I think it is driving a lot of what they're doing internally. And that's why Cloudian is a, from a partner perspective because they're so uh, unique in their S3 implementation because Amazon drives a lot of the application development with their S3 standard that's one reason we picked cloud in because we're taking what they said as kind of an industry standard and so customers can build their own uh, cloud environments. Yeah, so one of the things we see uh, talking to what customers want and how do they get really the operational model of the public cloud and, and how do I migrate from that? Because as you said, how do I get away from kind of the siloed environment that I have today where I'm, I'm spending way too much time, you know, just doing the geek knobs on my infrastructure, I need to move to a model where it's more automated and orchestrated. Right. Uh, so, you know, how do you move towards that model? I think it's really in the software layer we yeah. provide, and that's why we're partner based on that, right? Whether it's Nutanix or Nexenta or Cloudian, giving them the, the knobs and controls to do it, and really from an appliance perspective, I mean, the, the industry standard world has conditioned customers to consume technology as a custom thing. Right, I can always, I can always design something better as a customer if I tweak the wells and knobs and choose this processor and this memory and this drive. Making it simple in an appliance, that's why we're, we're doing the appliances is, we've done all the testing and optimization. Could they eke out another 3%? Probably. Do they need to? No, because they're not getting that in the cloud either. It's going to be much better when they implement it locally with what we've already pre-tuned than putting it somewhere where it's completely uh, homogenous across all of their, their hardware. 
Uh, you've given us a couple of very interesting analogies so far, all right, with the, the electric car and the bad infections and what have you. One more in you, I don't know, about where the next two to three years of storage is going. Do you have anything maybe uh, you can come up with for us about where you think this is headed or, or uh, what you think the next big, next big wave might be? I think the, I don't have an analogy, but I'll work on one. Maybe but a perspective, yeah. yeah okay. I think there's going to be a lot of change. And uh, again, the, the flash piece of it's going to fundamentally change how customers are, are, are deploying it. So it creates a lot of new opportunities. Uh, customers don't really, you know, one thing I always say is, like when customers come to talk to us in the briefing center, and, and I'm in our uh, headquarters in, in Raleigh, North Carolina, so I get to talk to lots of customers. But they never come in, and, when I, and I always start with, hey, what's the biggest problem you're trying to solve with your storage? They never come in and say, Stuart, I really need consistent latency, right? They, they, the big things they say is, look, it's way too damn complex. Uh, it costs too much, not just to buy, but to maintain and support, and it's not scalable. I think we'll see the industry, and Flash will drive a lot of part of this in Software Defined, is we'll strip out some of the complexity. The, uh, I've been in storage in a while, and my analogy is storage is always, over the years, right, we keep meeting what customers want, but we always meet it with a new solution, right? So I wanted to share storage, so I, I did shared storage, I wanted to network it, it's not fast enough, I'm gonna sell you an accelerator, I'm gonna sell you caching, I'm gonna sell you all flash, I'm gonna sell you something for your backup and your archive. What customers really want, if, if they'd like for what we sold them three years ago, to still do what they need to do. So I think, and one of the things we're, you know, we're gonna focus on is trying to strip out those layers. How you reduce costs is, 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 is much like, you know, what you talked about, convergence, converging those layers of storage, right? So the, the model of, I've got tier one, tier two, tier three, I've got backup. If we can take those layers out, that will really drive efficiency. And I think what you see, even in traditional, you'll see that happening for a lot of customers in the mid-market size, because again, it's not gonna be an all-flash world in 12 months, but hybrid, hybrid storage solutions where I can have high performance and petabyte scale all kind of behind one controller, and it will still be tiered, so we're not gonna get rid of those things. They can wipe out three different solutions they had with one really robust mid-range kind of storage thing for their customer size. For the big customers, you know, they've still got to have different solutions for their infrastructure. Well, Stuart, thanks for being with us. Thanks a lot, I here appreciate on the Cube. it. Great day for Lenovo here in San Francisco, and uh, we're glad we could be a part of it. Thank you, thank, thank you for you, having sir. me. Stu and I will be back with some final thoughts here on the Cube after this.